Wings to Fly is a children's book about gaining confidence and working to succeed, told from the perspective of a young girl who loves to play basketball. She is often left out by her teammates until she meets her guardian angel who teaches her that success takes perseverance. Wings to Fly is a great read for all children. I would highly recommend this book. If you would like to make a purchase, please click on the link in my description box below. What caught me at first was Bobby Hutton. The camera was on this young guy. He was my age and he had a shotgun and he was leading the whole uh, 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 delegation. And that kind of froze me in my tracks. I said, look at this. I never seen black people with guns before, especially at the Capitol. I mean, this is the first time ever kind of stuff. The very first member of the Black Panther Party was Bobby Hutton. Bobby Hutton had already known Bobby Seale from the North Oakland Service Center. Once the Panthers got the ball rolling, the numbers started increasing and everything started falling in place. They got their numbers up and the first thing they started to do was the local patrols. When we first started, we had a police alert patrol, and uh, we would uh, patrol the community. We, if we saw the police uh, brutalize anyone, we would put an end to this. Usually, the police wouldn't brutalize anyone if we were on hand because we were armed, and uh, if the police arrested the individual, we'd follow him to the jail and bail the individual out, uh, whether he was a panther or not. And we would gain many recruits like this, so therefore the community started to, uh, to, uh, to say that, well, these people are really concerned about our welfare. In the beginning, the patrols frightened and confused the police. The police didn't know how to respond. They had never seen black men walking around with guns like that. And they had no idea what was about to happen. They had many run-ins with the police. Sometimes the police drew their weapons and the Panthers drew theirs right back. Huey often felt that one day, the police will go crazy and pull the trigger. Huey said the police used to be so nervous that he always anticipated one of them to shoot. He said he would much rather a brave man pull a gun on him since he's less likely to panic. White America was terrified over this. See, this had him shook right here. Everything that they did they were well within their constitutional rights. Yeah, well that's legal too. If yours is legal, I don't see how y'all can be no better than us. You don't know the constitution, right? I'd like to share with you. We're well aware of the constitution. You have no right to take my gun away from me. You bring the constitution life. Right. That's all. He big the law for me and arrest him. Suddenly, uh, they surrounded that service station, and then I told everybody, we take the arrests, you know, and put your guns down, we take the arrests, and, they put, and the guns were really in the car, you know, at the service station. And then they come up and told me, he says, you're under arrest for carrying a concealed weapon. I said, you see this weapon, and you're calling it concealed. You're under arrest. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. But I was never charged with that. I was charged with disturbing the peace of the California State Legislature. Is this the pamphlet you're talking about? The pamphlet says that the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense calls on the American people in general to take careful note of the racist California legislature. Why do you believe the legislature is, is racist? Don't you know? You're a part of it, and you're obviously it's a white system. It's not obvious you see where we're at. So. What, do you, what do you mean? We just read the pamphlet and you'll see what we mean. You say to read your pamphlet, this is the pamphlet that the man presented me with. It's called a statement of the Black Panther Party for self-defense on the Mulford Act, now pending before the California legislature. The Mulford Act would control the use of arms, especially loaded weapons, and would prohibit them. These men seem to have loaded weapons with them. The statement seems to indicate that the, these people feel that the black people have been enslaved throughout most of their lives, that the white society is responsible for this. And then they go on to say, the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense believes that the time has come for black people to arm themselves against this terror, the 
terror of the white people, presumably, before it is too late. And the pending Mulford Act brings the hour of doom one step nearer. The Mulford Bill passed the California legislature in July of 1967 by a huge majority. As soon as the law changed, making it illegal to carry loaded weapons, they had to stop their armed patrols. Now with the Panthers unarmed, the police was getting ready to go at them hard, just like the cowards they were. Well, first, uh, it's my intention to make it a felony to bring a, a loaded weapon into the state capitol. I think that uh, the incident points out that, uh, shockingly, that the laws are inadequate, but also serves to emphasize the fact that the laws are inadequate to uh, protect the innocent public when uh, bands of armed people, let me make it perfectly clear, this has nothing to do with any racial incident, because in my testimony yesterday, there were five white groups I discussed and one Negro group, when bands of armed people with loaded weapons can uh, uh, move about our streets intimidating and frightening citizens, then I think we should act and we intend to act. Sacramento, I led an armed delegation to the California State Legislature specifically to read executive mandate number one, that I, Eldridge, and Huey Newton effectively contributed to, to, the, to the writing of executive mandate number one. And that was uh, in opposition to the California State Legislature attempting and having a bill to stop us from carrying loaded weapons. In other words, they weren't saying you couldn't carry a weapon, you couldn't carry a loaded weapon inside city limits. So that's the law and reason, the reason I went to Capitol in the first place. I read the statement out front where Ronald Reagan was um, already speaking, but he was off to the side of the large, broad walkway leading up to the Capitol steps, to the legislative Capitol steps. Well, I think it's a ridiculous way to try and solve the problems that have to be solved among people of goodwill, and there's certainly nothing that can be done in the line of goodwill when Americans have guns, uh, uh, with the, even the implied idea that those guns might be directed against other Americans. In effect, the kids left him. He was speaking to youth of America. He's, eight, nine, 10, 12 year olds. They saw us, the young white kids thought we were a gun club. They thought we had neat clothes and neat 30 odd sixes and stuff like this. And the press followed them. Am I under arrest? Am I take your hands off me if I'm not under arrest? Am I under arrest? I'm telling you to take your hands off me.